What's up, everybody? Welcome to our first ever weekly fantasy football video review. Um, we're going to mix it up from the emails, try this out for a little bit, see how it goes. Week one is officially in the books. Uh, not the most exciting week of football we've seen. Uh, even NFL Red Zone was pretty bored this week. But anyways, we still had tons of great matchups, um, so why don't we dive in and see what happened. Oh shit, almost forgot the commissioner hat. That's better. Alright, so let's take a look at this week's action and see who won and see who lost. Alright, let's start with the uh, first matchup of the week. Um, Dante took his team about that action boss and beat yours truly by about 12 points. Um, but let's get to the elephant in the room here. And let's talk about this 75-yard Tyreek Hill touchdown. Everybody knows that he was offsides. Um, you can tell. I mean, just look at the fucking picture. So Dante, all I'm asking is do the right thing, forfeit the points, and in this case, unfortunately, it means forfeit the victory. But, I mean, for the sake of the league, for the sake of integrity, give up the win. The next matchup, we had Kyle's team, Big Wheeling, and a bunch of symbols. Side note, you assholes with the teams, with the symbols, you're killing me. If I'm going to be doing videos and I'm trying to talk about team names and you're just a bunch of triangles and squiggly lines, what do you expect me to do? So anyway, squiggly lines, Kyle's team over here versus Jason's, hit him with the Hine. Nice classic original name you keep for years. People tend to remember those names. Kyle easily won this match by over 20 points. And he even scored uh, one of the higher points, even without his top draft pick, Odell Beckham Jr., who sprained his taint earlier in the week. Personally, if I sprained my taint, it would be career-ending, but we'll just have to see um, if he can bounce back from that. Jason, on the other hand, must not be too happy with Adrian Peterson. I'm married now, so I can't do anything without my wife getting involved. So Rosie's going to have a special segment of her own Fashion Week in the NFL. Rosie, what do you have? Fresh, I'm fly, I'm so damn high. Thanks, Eric. And what a week of fashion it was for the NFL. So we're going to Stefan, Stefan Diggs shoes. First things first, let's talk about Stefan Diggs and his shoes this week. Adding some flair with photos of Randy Moss all over his shoes. Personally, not my favorite thing. However, Eric... Fuck, you're doing good <laughs> He decided to add some flair to his shoes, his foreign old black shoes, um, by adding photos of Randy Moss. One with him seemingly taking a stardust poop. Personally, it's not my favorite thing. However, Eric does say that, you know, it looks cool or whatever. What was up with Luke Keekly? It seems like if the Panthers are keeping him on a short leash, I'm not sure what's going on with the collar. Uh, I wasn't quite feeling it. Hang on. Oh, I just got that it's about monitoring concussions. I guess that's something that they do need. My bad. And now to my favorite uniform. I don't know about you guys, but I was totally jagging off this weekend to the Jaguars uniform. Look at those butts in that black, those black tight pants. Just top notch. Excellent. I loved it. Way to go, Jaguars. You stay classy. And now back to you, Eric. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? All right, in our next matchup, we had T. Morris uh, prance out Marshawn Lynch into his lineup to try to get him some revenge on his original team, 4th and Lynch's. Um, unfortunately, Mark was just too strong in week one. Um, he looked pretty pretty good across the board for the most part. Oh, no, he didn't. Mark did not look good. I said, where the fuck did your points come from, Mark? Oh, shit, the defense. The Jacksonville defense, holy shit. What are they, the fucking 85 Bears? Almost got team of the week. Um, if it wasn't for Stefan Diggs and his amazing Monday night, um, you'd be $25 richer, Mark, but unfortunately, you're just another bum like the rest of us. And then we had a matchup between, uh, burps. Between uh, Whippets Mookie and Balding Eagle, two of our uh, OG teams from the beginning. Mookie, dude, there's not much to be proud of there. Yeah, man. If anyone was going to beat Pat, it was this week. I can't see this team scoring any less than 80 points a week with Le'Veon Bell. Ezekiel Elliott, solid wide receivers, Carson Wentz is starting off strong, bright future for this team. In the matchup between Will Fork for food and getting dug with Folan, actually looked better than the Folan we've seen over the last couple of years. Um, unfortunately this week Folan you had to play the team of the week, 
Donald brought out an amazing lineup. It started off with Kareem Hunt on Thursday, scoring 45 points. And I'm actually being told that we have our sideline correspondent, Eric, over in the Bellamy offices with Donald, um, where he's going to give a quick word on his week one performance. Um, let's go on over to Eric at Bellamy. Eric. Thanks, Eric. I'm here live with Donald, manager of Getting Dug With, and he is our first Team of the Week champion. Donald, tell us how you feel. I feel great. He feels... <laughs> I'm a winner. Okay, you're the winner. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for you as you did lose your first pick, David Johnson. Yeah. Um, what do you plan on doing to compensate that for the rest of the year? A plea to the rest of my league managers, trade with me. David Johnson's on the block, number one pick. Number one pick. Now you're going up into your next big matchup next week against Baldwin mm -hmm. Eagle, where manager Pat was able to somehow draft Le'Veon Bell and Ezekiel Elliott due to our weird 2017 fantasy season. Yeah. Do you think you can beat this other 1-0 team? Well, Eric, Baldwin Eagles only put up 80 points. I put up 80 points in my sleep. So can I beat him? Yes. Very good point. Very yeah. good point. Finally, what are your predictions for the year? Getting dug with not only will be team of the week, but team of the year. Team of the year. Well, there you have it. Donald may have lost his top player, but he did not lose his confidence. We'll see if he makes it to the finals. Back to you, Eric. Wow, thank you very much, Eric. And thank you very much, Donald, um, for the compelling interview. For our final matchup, we have the matchup of the week. And actually, this was between our two lowest scoring teams. Um, but when the game comes down to the final play of the final game on Monday night, it's almost guaranteed to be the game of the week. <laughs> I didn't even tell you the team names. CT Merck um, and Golden Taint. Instead of me just rambling, why don't we actually take a look at the action for ourselves and see how everything unfolded. Week 1, CT Merck versus Golden Taint. Here we go. Both teams are fired up and ready to roll. Jordan Howard kicks things off with a halfback sweep to the right. Whoop! Touchdown! CT Merck with the early lead. Not a bad second round auto draft pick after all, huh, Allen? Terrence West getting some more playing time now that Danny Woodhead is injured, and he punches one down the middle for another touchdown for CT Merck early Sunday afternoon. Allen has got to be feeling good early on. Let's see if his team can hold on to that lead moving into Monday night. Melvin Taint down but not out. Melvin Gordon looking to get his team back in the game. Bam! We have a touchdown. Things are looking brighter on the other side of the board. Teams are playing each defense in this game, which makes it very interesting. Golden Taint actually going up against the Broncos defense, um, so every touchdown in these last few minutes are vital. You see one there by Keenan Allen. Chargers get the ball back almost immediately and follow it up with a bomb to Travis Benjamin. Um, Allen has got to be shaking in his boots after that one. We got a close game. And like clockwork, the Chargers get it again. Keenan Allen sets him up for field goal range. Let's go to Beth on the field for the final call. Beth. Second time, and it is no good! It's blocked here. Let's see who gets a hand on it. Shelby Harris got a piece of it. Still one second left on the clock. Wow. The block field goal gives C.T. Merck and Allen a win by one-tenth of a point. That has got to be one of the closest games in ICW history. And what a way to end week one. And it's just amazing how Alan snuck away with the victory. Well, that'll do it for week one. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see what comes up next week. Fuck if I know. Um, we'll take it one week at a time. Fuck, what was I going to do? Um, let's get down to business before we go. I got payments from a lot of you guys before even starting to collect them. So thank you very much. It's been a very easy process for your commissioner this year. Um, there are still a few that haven't paid. Um, I'd like to get that taken care of sooner than later so we don't have to think about it. If you see your name on the scroll below, um, that means you haven't paid. Um, if you're not sure how to pay, talk to me. We'll work something out. Venmo is the preferred method, but as in the past, I can work around what you guys are able to do. So that's all I got for you today. I will see you next week. Good luck, everybody. Uh, see you guys.